good morning all of you in the last class we have discussed about the chemical taste of sewage and today we will discuss about the bacteriological taste in sewage analysis the bacteriological taste are not of much importance and hence they are rarely made and the presence of bacteria in a sample of sewage has no effect on the uh, selection of sewage treatment method but it is essential uh, for the uh, efficient but the presence of biological life is essential for the efficient working of the treatment unit and the absence of bacteria in a sample of sewage will indicate that there is presence of industrial waste which are harmful to the bacterial life and the bacterial bacteriological tests are carried out to know the presence of bacteria fungi and algae etc and these are also done to determine the degree of pollution of natural sources of water in which the sewage is discharged next decomposition of sewage so the decomposition of sewage the function of bacteria in sewage is to break the complex organic compound into simple compounds and the decomposition of sewage by bacteria is of following types one is aerobic decomposition second one is anaerobic decomposition so first aerobic decomposition this aerobic decomposition is caused by the aerobic bacteria in presence of oxygen and this type of bacteria cannot survive without oxygen this decomposition is also known as oxidation and in this process the aerobic bacteria break up the organic matters and they are oxidized to form stable compounds and the end product of oxidation include carbon dioxide nitrates sulfates etc and this type of decomposition process is generally adopted in treatment units such as contact bed oxidation pond trickling filters etc next is anaerobic decomposition anaerobic decomposition is caused by the anaerobic bacteria in absence of oxygen and this type of bacteria can survive without oxygen this decomposition is also known as putrefaction and after putrefaction the compounds like humus ammonia methane hydrogen sulfide carbon dioxide nitrogen hydrogen etc are formed and this type of decomposition are generally occur in septic tank imhoff tank and sludge digestion tank next we will discuss about the cycles of decomposition so the organic matter is consumed by bacteria and it is converted into simple chemical substances then these substances are consumed as food by plant and animal life and the organic matter is formed again 
so in biochemical reactions also such cycle of decomposition is developed that means the matter of the universe remains constant the change occurs only in the form the complex organic matter is broken up by biochemical reaction into simple compounds which are consumed then by animals and plant life for their growth so it is as far as sewage treatment is concerned the following three types of cycles are important that is carbon cycle nitrogen cycle and sulfur cycle first one is carbon cycle the decomposition of organic carbonaceous matter form carbon dioxide then the plants consume the carbon dioxide by the process of photosynthesis and they will form plant carbohydrate fat and protein then animals consume the plants and they form animal fat and proteins then the waste product of animals form the again the organic carbonaceous matter so see here this is the carbon cycle so first organic carbonaceous matter the decomposition of organic carbonaceous matter form carbon dioxide and then plants consume the carbon dioxide through photosynthesis and produce plant carbohydrates fat and protein then these plants are again consumed by the animals and they form animal fat and protein and then after the death or the waste product of animals will produce organic carbonaceous matter so this is the thus in this way the carbon cycle is completed the actual cycle is shown here by farm line and the dotted line here you can see there are some dotted lines so these will show the subsidiary cycle of carbon so here the organic carbonaceous matter may also be formed by the death of plants so this organic so when this due to the death of the plant here you can see this is the dotted line this are these are the subsidiary cycle so by the death of the plant directly they will form organic carbonaceous matter similarly this plant life gives off carbon dioxide at night and the animal life also gives off carbon dioxide so these two process are known as respiration so by respiration the plant life and animal life also produce carbon dioxide okay so these are the sub cycles which are shown by dotted lines so this is about your carbon cycle next one is nitrogen cycle the decomposition of organic nitrogenous matter form ammonia and nitrogen then by the process of nitrification this ammonia and nitrogen are transformed into nitrite nitrate and free nitrogen then the plants will consume this product and plant proteins are formed next animals consume the plant and animals proteins are formed 
finally the waste products or the death of animal form the organic nitrogenous matter again so see here this is the organic nitrogenous matter so which on decomposition form ammonia and nitrogen then by the process of nitrification this ammonia and nitrogen are transformed into nitrite nitrate and free nitrogen then this will be consumed by the plant to produce plant protein then this plant will be consumed by the animals to form animal protein and finally the waste matter or the death of the animal will again produce the organic nitrogenous matter so this farm line will show the uh, actual cycle and there are also some subsidiary cycles which are shown in dotted lines that are here you can see the the nitrate nitrogen here the nitrate and nitrogen may be converted into ammonia and free nitrogen by the process of denitrification so by the process of denitrification this will again produce ammonia and nitrogen then similarly free nitrogen may directly converted into plant protein by certain type of bacteria that are residing in the roots of the plant and this is known as nitrogen fixation clear free nitrogen can directly be converted into plant protein by the process of nitrogen fixation and the waste product such as the urea of animals may sometimes decompose directly and form ammonia and free nitrogen that means the waste product of animals sometimes directly decompose and form ammonia and free nitrogen so these are the subsidiary cycles so after the denitrification for example after denitrification this nitrate again converted into ammonia nitrogen and again by the nitrification process they will form nitrite that that will be consumed by plant to form plant protein then this will be consumed by animal by to form animal protein and then finally they will form after the waste or the death they will form organic nitrogenous matter so these are the subsidiary cycles so this is how the nitrogen cycle works next one is sulfur cycle so here the hydrogen sulfide is formed by the decomposition of organic sulfurous matter then sulfates are formed by the oxidation of hydrogen sulfide and then plant consume the sulfate and produce plant protein and animal consume the plants and thus animal proteins are formed so you can see here the organic sulfurous matter after decomposition form the hydrogen sulfide and this hydrogen sulfide due to the oxidation of hydrogen sulfide the sulfates are formed then plants consume this sulfate to produce plant protein and then animals consume the plant to produce animal protein and after the uh, death of the animal or the waste matter from the animal will again produce organic sulfurous matter here also the actual cycle is formed in solid or farm line and the subsidiary cycle is shown in the dotted line so you can see here the organic uh, 
sulfurous matter may be formed by the death of the plant and see the organic sulfurous matter can be formed by the directly by the death of the plant similarly the sulfates which are produced they will get converted into hydrogen sulfide by the process of reduction that means in the absence of oxygen sometimes the sulfates in the absence of oxygen will be converted into hydrogen sulfide and that procedure process is known as your reduction so these are the subsidiary cycle and and the sulfur cycle is completed so this is all about for today's class thank you